everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Star Girl Season 2 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 7, Summer School Chapter 7, which I've just finished watching. And this episode was absolutely brilliant. And in a way, this episode was kind of like a spotlight episode in some ways. The main focus of this episode was mostly on Yolanda as she was dealing with the fact that she murdered Brainwave back in season one and she was dealing with the aftermath of those actions and obviously you can tell this is something to do with Eclipso who we saw finally take his true form in the last episode which by the way was absolutely brilliant seeing all of the JSA going at it with the ISA. It was just absolutely amazing seeing all of their worst fears coming to life and that big fight in the toilets with our man and Artemis was just absolutely brilliant. And this episode was a fantastic follow up to episode six. So, as I mentioned already, this episode pretty much was a spotlight episode. It focused on Yolanda and we got to really get into her head as she was dealing with seeing Brainwave trying to corrupt her and take over her body and it was just really good. I thought this was definitely one of the best episodes of season two so far. And we also saw in this episode, we saw Yolanda telling the rest of the team that she murdered Brainwave and everybody's trying to deal with that revelation so that was brilliant also but once again this season just continues to keep getting better and better in my opinion so with that all said let's get straight into it let's talk about episode 7 summer school chapter 7 so this episode kicks off with Yolanda sitting in the church and talking to the priest about her sins and asking if the devil is real and tells him that she thinks she's seen him. She struggles to explain, suggesting that even if God isn't on earth to stop the devil, shouldn't they? And then she asks if something is truly evil, can she be forgiven for killing them? Now this was, in my opinion, an excellent opening scene. And then we start to see Yolanda experiencing some horrible headaches as the priest asks over and over what exactly she's done. And Yolanda simply says that the devil is real and he's in Blue Valley before running out of the church. Excellent opening episode. Great way to kick it off. And, you know, this is already setting the tone already. And we're already, what, five minutes into the episode already. All along downtown, people are getting ready for the July 4th festivities the next day. But it's unseasonably grey and cold. There are even no leaves on the trees. And we see at Courtney's house the staff is slowly starting to recover, but it's not there yet. Eclipso hasn't been seen in days. No one's sure what became of the shade, nor are they sure what Eclipso wants with Blue Valley. As for the American Dream, one of the staff wants to shut down the sewing machine factory in a nearby town, citing financial concerns, and Barbara suggests selling things for cash flow as Jordan Man Kent wouldn't have given up on that town. Everyone agrees and the motion passes. As Barbara goes to leave, she hears the shade and looks up and notices shadows on the ceiling. They disappear, but blood drops onto the table. Now, obviously we know the shade isn't dead because we did see him at the end of episode six. So he's very weak after the big battle with Eclipso. So I would probably say the shade is more or less hiding the shadows. No pun intended. So at some point, we probably will see the shade again. As for Dinah, the other waitress goes to serve a rude customer that always verbally abuses the staff and is briefly possessed by Eclipso to pour coffee on the man's shoulder. Yolanda notices the young boy, who we see in the opening episode of season two, and not realising that it's actually Eclipso, gives him a lollipop to come him from the scary incident. Walking down the street, Cameron sneaks up on Courtney and briefly freaks her out but he invites her to help set up 4th of July decorations. She chooses to hang out with him this time, putting her phone away to focus on him, 
getting off work, Yolanda has another horrible headache and goes to reach out to Courtney, but sees her with Cameron and doesn't bother. She goes back to the church instead and finds that the priest has called her mother, who is instantly cruel to her. Yolanda thinks she sees something and runs out. At the shop, Mike and Pat start to try to rebuild Stripe as part of his training, and left alone, Mike discovered shards of the black diamond, and after messing with them, hallucinates and leeches. Pat comes back and explains that Mike shouldn't mess with that, but also that the diamond was Eclipso's one weakness, and that he hopes it can still be used against him. That's handy. At school, Courtney is distracted, and Yolanda gets a text that appears to be from Henry. She then sees him in the hall and goes outside, following him via a trail of blood to the cafeteria. He tells her that because she never forgave him, he's in a bad place now, and that his father will never forgive her. Her head starts to hurt, and Brainwave shows up, telling him he's there forever. Yolanda cries out, still in class. Courtney sits out in the hall with her, and Yolanda tells her that she's seen Henry and Brainwave now, and it's been going on since before Eclipso appeared. Courtney wants to talk to the team and says they'll understand. Now, Brainwave kind of reminds me of the reverse Flash, you know, Eobard form. Although maybe not as eccentric, he's got this very calm, evil presence, as I said, very similar to the reverse Flash. So I think that's really cool. At Courtney's, Yolanda opens up to the team about killing Brainwave and they're shocked. Rick is supportive and says he would have done the same thing, though Yolanda questions him about why he didn't kill Solomon Grundy. It's because he's a better person than her. Beth, however, isn't as understanding, and Yolanda realises that the rest of the team isn't capable of killing when it comes to things like that, and she says she will forever be known as the one JSA member who kills people. And also goes on to say that it would be on her to kill Eclipso, meaning more guilt for her to live with. We then see Yolanda goes back to the church to confess and Brainwave suddenly appears. He attacks her and it turns out that as he was dying he transferred his mind to hers and has been lurking there for months. As her guilt has weakened her, he's been waiting for the right moment to take over her body fully. Courtney shows up and Yolanda attacks Brainwave to save her. A confused Courtney asks what's happened and Yolanda tells her it will never be okay. She tells Courtney that she quits the JSA, she was never supposed to be Wildcat, and later Courtney tries to call Yolanda but her mother picks up and tells Courtney to stop calling her and blaming her for corrupting Yolanda. Her mother also calls the diner and quits Yolanda's job for her. Courtney talks to her family and tries to figure out if it really was Brainwave or it was just Eclipso. At Beth's house, Beth sleeps fitfully while outside of the lawn we see the same creepy little boy as the beginning eating a lollipop and laughs menacingly and that's how we end episode seven and that officially wraps up my review as i said this was an excellent episode and a great follow-up to episode six in my opinion and as i mentioned at the beginning this was mainly a spotlight episode of sorts with Yolanda as the main focus and this was thoroughly enjoyable and we finally learn that Brainwave is in her head trying to take over her body but it does beg the question is it really Eclipso doing all of this but time will tell really but this was absolutely brilliant with no dull moments whatsoever and at times it was quite scary as well I've noticed with the last couple of episodes of Stargirl, they've been quite dark and scary, which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's quite dark and intense and leaning very close to the horror aspects. But this is great stuff and I'm really looking forward to the next episode and I'm really enjoying season two of Stargirl a lot. So that's going to be it for me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode seven? Did you enjoy it? And what was your thoughts on Brainwave possibly in Yolanda's head trying to take over her body? Do you think it really is Brainwave or do you think it's Eclipso? And also, what about Yolanda quitting the JSA? Do you think she might have been a little bit hasty? And do you think Yolanda is kind of going a bit over the top a bit with the whole 
killing brainwave thing and do you think that her friends in the jsa do you think they're not as understanding and also what about the creepy little boy that we've been seeing we know it's eclipse so but will he reveal himself once again you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the star girls season 2 review series where I am going to be talking about episode 8, which I am really looking forward to seeing, especially with the way the last two episodes have played out. And bring it on, that's what I say, should be a good one. So until next time, take care everybody and stay safe. And once again, thanks for listening.